It's time. Let's check out the Koyorvis Phantom HD. These are the Koyorvis Phantom HD Joy-Cons. And yes, these are high-end Joy-Cons in terms of their high price, but they come with some crazy features. So straight away, I wanna go over the specifications, of course, and let's start with, yes, they do have wake from sleep. So I'm just gonna pull my switch like in here. There we go, I've pressed the home and the screenshot button together, and now they are connected. They are wireless, they have wake from sleep as well, which is awesome. They do have gyro as well, as you can see with Mario, and you can still use them independently as independent Joy-Cons. They've got 500 milliamp our battery capacity in each side. They do not have back paddles, so no assignable back paddle on the back, but they do still have a button. Now you're thinking, hey Andy, where's where's this button you're saying? Da, 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 on the top. We've got this extra sort of bumpery trigger thing on the top just here, and that is your M1, M2 macro buttons, essentially. And these can be assigned to a button swap or a macro. On top of that, we also have turbo functionality on both sides as well. We do get our D-pad. We actually get, yes, yes, another company doing it. We get mechanical switches. So we've got mechanical switches in the face buttons, in the triggers and bumpers as well as the M1 and M2s. And they have a five mm million click lifespan. Bear in mind, Membrane typically has like a one million click. So these are already winning in terms of that. But that's not all. These just keep on giving, don't they? <laughs> they have not normal rumble, no. These have HD rumble. So these are shaping up to be pretty freaking specced out. And I haven't even finished yet. There's still more specs because these come in black and the most important one to loads of people is they've got hall effect sensing joysticks which use magnets instead of friction which means lower dead zone quicker input rate and also no drift so yeah the, these are looking like pretty freaking tasty joy cons if you ask me and coilvis has done a pretty cool job of doing this you know let's take a look at the design and everything like that and just go from there so the coilvis the phantom hd just here they are looking pretty sleek i like this ice white that they've got yes they do a black this is a nice ice white you know it's not like an off white i mean look at how, how horrible my official joy cons that came with the oled look now they're like gray like all stained and horrible Horrible because I've been using them like so much for the past couple of years whereas these are like obviously nice and ice white of course I've only been using these for like a few weeks so I can't tell you if they're gonna like stain or not over time but brand new they look lovely they've got black accents so on other white joy cons they opt for white you know accents and those white accents end up becoming stained especially the joysticks because these are typically rubber right but Koyorvis has opted for black accents, which means they're not going to stain. They're just going to remain black. So that's definitely a nice thing. I, I like that a lot in terms of the style. You've got Koyorvis up on the top, and I don't dislike that. Design-wise, I like it. I do like the aesthetic of these. They're very similar to the actual Joy-Con. They're like just straight up and down. They don't kick out too much to the left or anything like, it's almost like an oversized Joy-Con just with way more specs, right? And I don't dislike that. Again, it's a bit more narrow, a bit more compact than most, if not all of the other Joy-Con alternatives I've seen in quite a long time. This is really compact. If we flip it to the side, you can see it's actually pretty thin. It's not far off an actual Joy-Con. Now it is obviously larger and they've done this to give you better ergonomics. Like you can see the shadowing around here, which shows you like the thickness. You can see that this, the Koyorvis Phantom here, the HDs, are actually way more comfortable to hold than just a straight up and down Joy-Con, which gets crampy, especially on this right side, right? Whereas on this one, it kicks out enough, just enough to get to that asymmetrical like joystick layout where it's offset, you know, so one's down here. I would say, and we'll look at this when it's attached, you still need to like adorn a slightly like looser grip to get to this right one because it's not 
fat enough, you know, but that might not be a downside for those of you with smaller hands. On the left side, we've got the turbo button. We've got the macro button for assigning. We've got screenshot. We've got a D-pad. We've got minus. We've got a Hall Effect Sensor joystick. We've got L. We've got M1 and ZL as well. And then that's it. Nothing on the back. And on the right-hand side, we've got the same thing down here. So we've got cogwheel for macro, turbo, home, Hall Effect, joystick, mechanical face buttons, plus... And then we've got R, ZR, and M2, and that's it. Now, I personally like the fact that they've done away with the back paddle because I get so many comments of people going, Andy, I really like the look of these, but I can't do back paddles because they just, you know, I accidentally press them or they're in the way or I just don't like them even if they're like disengaged, right? And that's fair enough. Everyone's allowed their opinion and their own preference, right? And the good thing is, is now you've got another option if you want a high spec uh, Joy-Con alternative. I was worried when I started seeing controllers having this like third button on the top. I was like, oh, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about like, you know, pressing it. But actually in use, especially with Joy-Cons that are generally quite small anyway, like getting to this is not an issue. So let's start going over everything in detail and I will start with the D-pad, right? Now this one is flat, like it is totally flat. There is no concave on there whatsoever. So it is completely and utterly flat and it does protrude and it's okay. It's not like pro level D-pad which is a little bit sad. It's not the best I've felt, and it definitely is not the worst, just to give you a D-pad test, because people like the rocking thing, right? I'm just gonna hold down, and then I'm gonna rock left. Yes, he moves. Right, yes, he moves. There's no four-way mode on this. It's just an eight-way D-pad at all times. But again, it's not like horrendous. It really isn't, it's okay. Moving on to the mechanical face buttons. So the face buttons just here, are mechanical switches. These are like micro switches that you would find in a mouse that gives you that ch -ch -ch when you click it. And that's exactly what these do because they are mechanical, right? So I'll give you a, a listen now, right? As opposed to the official Joy-Cons, which are a membrane. Right, so they're almost silent, whereas these are going to click. But for me, the benefits far outweigh that annoying sound. And to be honest, it doesn't annoy me anyway. But the benefits are the much faster to actuate. So your input is going to happen immediately. They are super quick to respond as well. Like, you know, they're going to return back to the starting point much quicker. They, You can sit there and press these like so much faster than you could with like a membrane button. And it's more satisfying. And you also know that you've actually clicked that button button and it's actually happened you know it's really nice i love mechanical switches i wish more people use them in their controllers because they are just the best i mean i have come from pc gaming i massively appreciate mechanical face buttons at least now these ones in particular there's a tiny bit of mush you know there's a very small amount of pre-travel and, and i'm being hyper critical here i'm saying like there's there's almost none, but there is a little bit. And there's not really any post-travel, maybe a, a tiny bit. They're just a little bit mushy, but they're perfectly fine. One thing to note though is the font. So it's got almost like a Joy-Con like switch thing, like as a B. It might not be for everybody, but yeah, that's just painted onto the button. And again, these are flat. They do not follow the curvature of the controller. They are just straight up flat. But again, it's kind of like a flat Joy-Con, like I said earlier. So it's not, it's not a problem at all. Let's move over to the bumpers, triggers, and that M button in terms of feel at least. So these have a lot of travel. Obviously, if you held it up here and click there, less travel because is on a pivot right so if you push here you're having to swing that whole arm down before it then clicks that switch whereas if you click here it's almost instantaneously like clicking it right and that's the same with the m buttons you have to really push before click right so you click there's a lot all of that wiggle there is not actually doing anything and then i have to click and then that's it you know when i sit here and i feel them, i go Ooh, a little bit mushy but actually in use, it's okay. Finally, we've got the triggers as well. And yes, these are digital, not analog because they have those mechanical switches as well. And again, a fair bit of wiggle on there before the click and then a little bit of 
post travel but it's okay you know like the bumpers and triggers and stuff could have been a little bit tighter in my opinion now the joysticks so the joysticks are of course hall effect sensing joysticks which means you know no drift quicker input no like lower dead zone much lower dead zone i've not had a problem at all with these they're buttery smooth they do have an anti-friction ring around them in black just there but they don't have that metal sort of anti-friction ring underneath here and you cannot remove these either you know they don't pull off so don't try that so the caps here are like almost like little wheels and I really like it you know they're super super grippy they're small but not too small and I just dig these joysticks really good if you're into like FPS games and stuff and you want to be super accurate well these are gonna serve you just fine now let me show you the turbo now if you don't know what turbo is turbo will basically repeat an action for you so it saves your controller buttons out like from where but also saves you the hassle of actually doing something you can set turbo so you can just have it doing that action for you and you don't even have to be there you can just leave the turbo button is the one with the two bullets on just here so I'm gonna press the turbo button and B and now if I hold it do you see how he's just jumping and it might not show great on camera but there's a light that flashes right now I've got it set currently to do low amount of inputs for me right but I can change that by holding the turbo button and pressing up once now do you see how much quicker he's jumping and the, the light is flashing faster again my camera might not pick this up due to the shutter speed but he is jumping faster and there's another setting which is insane fast so if i hold turbo and go up one more now it's like just going so fast mario can't even keep up you know and that light again might not even be flashing quick enough for you due to the camera it's probably just blinking slowly but in person it's going <laughs> that's what it does it just makes that noise but there is another turbo mode and that's by pressing turbo and b again now nothing's happening right but if i press b and let go well now it's just playing for me indefinitely until i turn it off you can pause it so if i press b again it will pause and then i can press b again and it will just keep going as well right and if i want to cancel this well then i just hold the turbo button for I think it's like five seconds or something. And then after a while, it's gonna go, boop, it's gonna vibrate, that's what that was. <laughs> and then it turns off. So Turbo is really cool. I've said this a lot in my previous reviews, but I used to love using Turbo with Animal Crossing for when you have to walk around and dig stuff or pick stuff up and you're constantly mashing a button, it's annoying, right? So I used Turbo and it made my life so much easier having that auto Turbo one. So I didn't even have to press the button and I could just run around and he would be picking stuff up for me. It's great. Or if FPS games, you don't want to be keeping like pressing that trigger down, we'll just set Turbo on, hold it down or have it do it for you and just run around and shoot stuff. Now let's take a look at that macro button you can't set like some button from this side to this side they are independent controllers from themselves right so you've got to set this side to that button and the left side to the left button but anyway with the cog i'm going to do button swap first so to do button swap i'm going to press and hold the cog until the light turns on which is like three seconds i'm going to press b once and then press that macro button on the top and now if i press that button on the top look Mario's jumping. True button swap. These have it. So what I mean by true button swap is the fact that it's actually really assigned that button to that button. So if I do a short jump like that, Mario's going to do a short jump. Whereas if I hold it, he's going to do a big jump. So you're getting full functionality out of that remapped button. Typically with games, I remap L3 and R3, the, the stick click button in to a macro button just because I don't like running and having to press like... A joystick it's annoying so i reassigned those now to cancel that you could just hold the cog wheel down for like five seconds it will vibrate and then it's cleared now we can do a macro so if you don't know what a macro is a macro recording is a series of inputs and it's recorded it for you uh, like a like a video right and then it like plays it back exactly how you did it so with this one i'm going to hold down the cog wheel for a few seconds and i think it's three seconds now it's like this right so i'm going to jump i'm going to fire that I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that again. And now I'm gonna press that and then let go and watch as Mario does that whole action for me. And he's gonna play it once because I pressed it once, right? But if I double click, he should, in theory, turbo that action. So we'll find out 
Yep, there we go. So now he's just started again. He's just going to keep doing it until I cancel it out. And you can cancel it out just by pressing like another button or whatever. And now he's stopped doing it. And to cancel this again, you just hold this button down for like five seconds. It's going to blink and then vibrate. Say, hey, it's cleared. And there we go. Oh, I forgot to say by default, these M1 and M2 buttons are just L and R. So they mirror the L and R. That is their like default setting. And as far as I'm aware, you can't turn that off, but you can like assign them to nothing by just pretending to assign and then just pressing that button and now it's not going to do anything so if you find yourself like going actually i've done something why is this no longer being like r just hold that cog button down for five seconds it's going to vibrate and then it resets itself back to being l and r right and then of course We've got HD Rumble. Yes, we have HD Rumble. So HD Rumble can mimic sounds and that's what we all love about it. They're in the official Joy-Cons and we've seen it in some other Joy-Cons as well as some Pro Controllers as well. And it's amazing. Like I, I love HD Rumble, it's much better. Basically, it can mimic those sounds in terms of feel and actual audible sounds, right? Whereas normal Rumble is just a big heavy motor swinging around. It's just either a high tinny Rumble, which I hate, or like a nice low round Rumble. And it's always just the same amount of Rumble, right? It just like does it for like shorter amounts of time. HD Rumble can absolutely change that. And that's why I've chosen this level with these little things in Super Mario Bros. Wonder, because these little things here, even though my Switch which volume is completely turned off, the Joy-Cons can mimic these. I'm just gonna run backwards and forwards on here and you'll be able to hear, hopefully, the sound of this HD rumble. It's super weird, isn't it? <laughs> it's super weird, but it's super cool. Let me give you a comparison against the actual official ones as well. So yeah, they're not as good as the official Nintendo HD Rumble, right? I've not found anything that's actually equal or better to the official Nintendo HD Rumble, but for a third party putting it in their controllers, I think it's great. Now let's put the thing on. That's probably what you've been waiting for. And straight away you'll notice it's fairly stiff to attach these. And that is a good thing because Otherwise, there's a potential for wobble, right? And once these are on, they are locked in. They are not going anywhere. There's no bend. There is no wiggle. They are locked into this thing. And oh, that just looks so cool, doesn't it? Like, how cool does this look? Like, I really like the look of this thing. I love the black and white. It accents the uh, like the bezel from the Switch OLED just here perfectly with the black accents. I really like it and it keeps it small. Most of the Joy-Con alternatives, again, are huge things that lump out. These are really small and yeah, you have to, like I said, have a slightly lighter grip to get to this right stick but honestly this is great like i really like it if you've been seeing any of these other joy con alternatives and thinking man they just look too big and too bulky i've only got small hands or whatever then these are definitely for you these are some of the slimmest that I've seen and they still have some ergonomics there, but they are definitely slimmer than pretty much most things out there. And again, yeah, I just like them aesthetically. I think they're really cool. Personally, there's a few things that could have been better, but let's go over the price point first. So these come in at $69.99. That is high, it is high, but this does have some crazy features, you know, you've got HD rumble that's number one there right mechanical switches with a five million click lifespan yeah you've got hall effect sensing joysticks which no drift whereas these you know you could get drift really quickly and have to spend out for these and these are not cheap either whereas these are gonna last the test of time right these just have so many things going for them they're really nice looking they're very cool they're good quality I like the colors I like that it comes in black as well like they're just great like Coilverse has done a really good job with the Phantom HD. Yes, they will most likely be coming from China. So if you do order a pair, it might take a few weeks to come, you know, and that's something you have to consider. But whilst I really do like these, there are a few things that I feel like could be in a little bit better. I feel the D-pad isn't quite up to scratch for like a pro level Joy-Con, right? Like it's good. It's okay. It's not the best. It's not the worst. But I just feel like I would have 
preferred it if it was better. <laughs> the main thing for me is how much travel is on all these triggers and bumpers. That is the main killer. That's the first thing I noticed when I took them out of the box. I was like, oh, there's a lot of travel and they're quite mushy. Even though they've got mechanical switches, I wish that they didn't have so much travel there. But looking aside all of that, I think these are brilliant. I think they're really good. Again, yes, they are slightly more expensive. However, they're gonna last the test of time with mechanical switches, Hall Effect sensing joysticks, and HD rumble as well. Like, you know, you're getting a lot of stuff there. I think they're really cool. If you like smaller style, compact Joy-Cons, I think these are probably gonna be for you. And if you hate back paddles, well then, these are definitely for you because they don't have them, but they still got the things at the top. But anyway, okay, Andy, what are they like compared to the MobaPad M6 HD? And that, my friends, is for another video. So make sure you're subscribed and memberships are open. And if you do become a member, then you can see these videos early and you can join our Discord and come to chat to all of us and all this good stuff. Check out my MobiPad M6 HD video down here because they are very similar. And check out mine and AJ's podcast where we talk about all things gaming up the top here and stay tuned for that new video. Bye.